Hello! In this video, I'm going to show you how I make my kava tea. This is what I drink to do anything that's anxiety inducing, that stresses me out. I have this on my drives up to Seattle, long road trips, anything like that. I always start off with a kava. And so I'm going to show you how I make it. What you'll need is a teapot or just a regular pot to bring water to a simmer. You don't want to boil it too hot. You just want it to be simmering. Measuring cup. I'm going to use a coffee press, but you can use a little sieve like funnel. This actually is like a tea funnel where you can squeeze the tea out. It looks very much like a cow udder. Okay, so now I have my hot water. As you can see, it's steaming, but it's not boiling. So here's the tea. This is two tablespoons, just in case you were wondering, this one. All right, so that's two tablespoons per cup. It just looks like a fine tea or like a ginger root almost. And if you're doing this with the water being as hot as it is, just make sure you have everything tightly secure so that it doesn't fly out and burn you. Now we're just gonna blend it all together. So now we're just gonna pour it straight in. You could drink this now, it would be ready to go, but I really like for it to sit and marinate. So you just put the press top on. I put some half and half in my coffee milk frother. So it's just gonna foam up the milk and make it nice and warm. So we're just gonna pour in our foam with the kava. And I do like a little bit of cinnamon. And there is your kava tea. All right, well, while I sip my kava and enjoy that it's making my tongue completely numb and making me feel very calm, let's just talk a little bit about it. Traditionally, Pacific Islander communities crushed, chewed, and ground the root and stump of the shrub, then soaked it in cold water to produce a drink for ceremonies and cultural practices. These rituals were said to strengthen ties among groups, reaffirm status, and help communicate with spirits. Kava was introduced to the communities in the north of Australia in the 1980s as a substitute for alcohol to reduce alcohol-related harms in the community. The kava drink is often used for sedative, hypnotic, and muscle relaxant effects in much the same way that alcohol is used. This is just really great for anybody who is on any sort of like sobriety path like I am, that you have a hard time just like doing all of these social activities with just nothing. And it's not that we, we should learn how to do things with like nothing to help us. Being in large crowds and being in crazy situations that you never know what's gonna happen and it's unpredictable and you're anxious, it's nice to have a little something to just relax you. So that might explain a little bit why I like it because obviously if you're somebody who doesn't drink, this is a great alternative to being able to do like social things or anxiety inducing things. I have found quite a few towns actually carry kava. So if you're looking for it locally, call any of your local tea shops. You'll be surprised how many pop up when you actually Google and start trying to find them. We have a lot around here and a lot in Seattle, a lot in Washington and Oregon. It's just a very popular thing around here is like little tea shops. So our local tea shop, the Mad Hat Tea Company, has a bunch of kava to choose from. When you are traveling, you can just call up local tea houses and ask. There's a place in Ashland, Oregon that will actually prepare for you just like a tea. So they'll put milk and honey and all the things in it and it's delicious. If you go to Sacramento, California, there's an entire lounge and bar completely dedicated to serving kava. So they have live music, they have lounges and couches and people just hanging out, sipping on some kava. It's so cool. So if you ever have an opportunity to go there in Sacramento, that is like one of our favorite places anytime we go. This is when if you were to do it a traditional way, you would pour the kava, fill it into your, this is like a tea pouch 
fill this with your kava and then I would just rest it in the water and let it sit and steep. And then as it cools off, I go in with my hand and just kind of milk it like an udder <laughs> into the water and just really try to activate it into the water. But that became time consuming, messy and annoying <laughs> for me, but it is a really great way to make it. And it came out like top notch every time. But now I do it the lazy man's way. I knew that I'd eventually cave because that's the way the guy at the Mad Hat Tea Company said to do it. He was like, just put it in a blender. And I'm like, I'm gonna do it like the dorky way and try to be traditional about it. Cause I just like to do things the way that it originated, but just to keep tradition alive. I would say though, mixing it with the fat is very important. It really makes it fully potent. It, it makes the potency the level that I like it to be. I always mix it with a little bit of half and half or coconut milk, whatever I have on hand. You can do oat milk, but it's not as fatty. So it, butter would be better. Or if you want that milky texture to make it more like a latte, then you can do the oat milk, but maybe add like a little bit of butter into it. So if you're an anxious person, maybe something to consider, maybe try some kava kava tea. Do it very like carefully, be responsible with it, just like anything else. Just, um, you know, take it in moderation. If you try it, let me know and let me know how you feel. Did it make your tongue numb? It makes your tongue and your throat numb, but like not in a weird way. It's kind of cool. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, just give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye. I like to share that.